What is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and the man behind the camera is Ian and today we bring you the 2020 Ford Explorer ST. I want to give a big shout out to Randy from Mount Bridges Ford. Thank you very much for loaning us this 2020 Ford Explorer ST. So if you're thinking about buying a Telluride, a Palisade, a Pilot, or even a Highlander, hmm, you could. Or you could buy this and have this type of fun. Don't you guys think this has some similarities to a Range Rover? I've always seen it on the road and I've thought, man, that's a good looking truck. So I really wanted to get the Explorer here and review it for you guys. Explorer. So let's talk about the Ford Explorer. You see, the Ford Explorer was made about 30 years ago and it had a massive run in the first 10 years, so much so that in 2000, this thing sold about half a million vehicles. And if you compare that to the Camry, the Camry sold about 400,000. This was America's best selling SUV. And then two things happened in 2000. Number one, the Firestone scandal with the tires. The tires would pop and yeah, good things didn't happen. And the second thing, the term Ford Exploder. Now Ford Explorer is kind of catchy because people would say, I drive a Ford, a Ford Explorer to kind of make sense, but not for the right reasons. So anyways, it declined all the way down to they sold in 2010, that's 10 years after their best selling years, they sold 10% of what they actually sold. So all the way from half a million, all the way down to about 40,000. So the brand was almost gone. You see, the Internet Explorer is gone, but the Ford Explorer is still here. But then in 2011, Ford decided to stop making trucks. So what they did was they took the Explorer and they stopped putting body on frame and then took pieces of the Volvo S80 frame and made it a unibody, which means it drives more like a car now. And that helped sales because sales started to climb up. So instead of being down 10%, they got that back up to 50%. So here we are today with the Ford Explorer ST. But don't worry, it's not all bad because remember Audi, they had unintended acceleration where vehicles would slam through living rooms. So everybody had their fair share of problems. I personally didn't want to review any other Ford Explorer except for this ST because it does obviously look like, you know, exactly. And the front of this car does have pieces of the Range Rover, which is like, wide body in the front. You see it kind of flares out in the front. It's got this really short overhang and this is a sixth generation and it just does not have a V8. So there are people out there that say, I need to have a V8. No, you don't need to have a V8. You need to have 400 horsepower. That is plenty. This thing does zero to 60 in guess. 5.2 to 5.3 seconds, depends on who reviews it. The Kia Stinger does zero to 60 in 5.1. This is fast. So I could have got a 2021. Now this is a 2020 because I wanted to check the wear and tear of a performance SUV after 20,000 miles. So in the 2021, you will have darkened front and rear headlights and taillights, but everything else is pretty much the same because this was released in 2020. Now, how is it gonna feel? So if you guys wanna see that, stay tuned for the drive portion of this video and I'll tell you and I'll show you how the fit and finish is after 20,000 miles of something like this. I really do like the front Explorer portion of it. I like how it's kind of like Kia Telluride, Range Rover-ish. I really like the monochromatic Ford logo. Kidding, it's not here. They should have one because this Ford logo meh, doesn't really fit in with all this black. Like this is a full blacked out package. This also does have the performance pack, which gives you red brakes. It gives you a few other pieces that make it a bit more performance oriented. But what else does it give you for the ST? All right, let's check under the hood because this is why you buy an ST. You see, they're available in four different variants. You can get the XLT, you can get the Limited, you can get the ST, and you can get the Platinum. This should really have, you know, not that but you can get three different versions in terms of power. 300 horsepower, 365, 400, and yes, they are gonna come up with a hybrid version just like they are in the F-150. 
Now, they, I've heard rumblings that they're going to put 500 horsepower in this thing, which is going to be insane. I am excited to drive it. But what confuses me is the Limited and Platinum. It kind of seems like the same thing. I always felt like Limited was the top of the line, but it's not. XLT, Limited, ST for performance, and Platinum. So on the side of the vehicle here, I like how they have the headlights to wrap around. It does have, as I mentioned, really wide hips. It does have the performance pack, which gives the red brakes and 21-inch wheels. But there's something really important about the side of this car, and that is the fact of getting in the back seats. Now, let me bring my bunch of keys. And if I want to unlock or lock, I simply just touch the handle and I unlock. Now, this might sound crazy, but other cars in this class don't have this. And for me, getting in and out of the back seat is important because you only buy these things when you have kids. So when you get the kids out, you don't want to jump to the front seat and hit and lock the car. Anyways, in terms of length, this thing is 119 inches. In comparison, the Audi Q7 is 117 inches and the Kia Telluride is 115 inches. Or maybe it's 114.9. But the point is, is that this is a pretty large vehicle and something that makes this kind of power and to become sporty is not easy. So I'm really excited to get this thing on the road and see how it drives, but let's move to the back. And we're back, and we changed the look for you. Instead of going to the back, we are flipping the cars around. Tell us what you guys think in the comments below, and if you like this look. So if you made it this far in the video, one of the biggest points about this Ford Explorer is that it is now rear wheel bias. You see, from 2011 all the way to basically 2020, it's been a front wheel bias, and that, to me, eh, no good. But now, it's rear wheel bias, which means you can have some fun with it. If I'm stuck with buying only one vehicle, and I want something of fun to do donuts in, there's nothing I can do in a Kia Telluride, a Pilot, a Passport, or a Highlander, but I can do it in this, and I may or may not get pulled over. If there's two things I'm not a fan about is one is these lug nuts should be black. They should not be silver. It's a full blacked out package. It should be silver. And secondly, these exhausts. The exhausts look like real exhaust, but they actually point down. And that is generally done because of carbon buildup. They don't actually want to have black around these exhaust tips when they get old. Maybe that's it, carbon buildup. Now, when this is locked, um, there's a little arrow here to unlock the trunk, but it doesn't work with the key right here. Like, it's got proximity on the rest of the doors, but it doesn't have it here. And kick trunk, Ford, you invented it. It doesn't work. So I have to unlock it, and then push the button, and then she opens. But you did learn something from the Germans, because you have lock, here, so when you leave the car, you take all your groceries, you get out, you want to lock the car, you push the button, it closes the tra tailgate, and you can leave and it locks the car. That is cool. And that is probably why you don't have it on the outside. So you have one, but you don't have the other. Hmm, confused. Let me know. Comments below. All right, so the Ford designers actually did a really good job here in the rear trunk. Besides the fact they got top safety pick for the IHS for safety and crashes, this is genius because I've reviewed a lot of other SUVs and they have a really wide overhang. So you actually scrape the bumper. This is smart because it does have plastic here, plastic here, but it's short. And because it's short, they gain more space inside. Hmm, thinking. Come check this out. I really like how manufacturers are doing these little Easter eggs in little portions of the car. And I'm seeing it across the car industry, but it's really cool that you pop it up and it shows Explorer. But it also has a function. When I take this and I flip it over, dirty boots. You got dirty stuff right here. So the Explorer has something cool here. You can actually have both seats go down at the same time. Instead of holding two buttons, you can individually pick them or you can press left and right and they both go down. Now, they're not the fastest, but they're fast enough, I guess. And up. Synchronized, swimming. All right, so I'm in the back of the Ford Explorer ST. And the thing I do like about it is when you open the door, you actually can get in very easily because they've shortened the width of the seat. So you can get in, there's something for your foot to get in and out of the third row. Check it out, it's super easy. In the back here, you also have sunshades. Pretty awesome, they are manual, like most are, so that's no different. In terms of seating, I'm a pretty small guy, five foot eight and a half, and it's plenty for me. I think if you're six foot, you'll have the height. Maybe the width won't appeal to you, but it's big enough, lots of room. As far as functionality goes here, you do have a 12 volt and a full plug-in. It's got USB and USB-C, which is nice because not everybody's on the USB-C bandwagon yet. As far as cup holders, pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy there. Let's see, getting in the back seat from here. It's 
slides back and forth. Pretty straightforward. Does it slide backwards and forward? Yes, it does. Oh, it actually goes back more than I was expecting. So it's also nice that this does have Bang & Olsen. That has 14 speakers, which is pretty sweet. But you know, 14 speakers out of a Ford. Pretty awesome. Bye-bye, Sony. So I'm in the front of the Ford Explorer now, and these seats are awesome. They do hold you in pretty well. Um, this was lathered up pretty well with some leather conditioner, so it's a bit slidey. But the only complaint I will have is the length or depth of the lower seat. For taller people, they like to have leg extensions, and this does not offer that. I tried to go through the system, and I could not find any leg extensions. And I'm looking at the leather here. It does not extend. So if you do have a Ford Explorer, let me know about that issue. But on the other hand, this steering wheel, this is a really, really sporty driver oriented steering wheel it does have all the buttons you need on the steering wheel itself there's no reason to really take your hands off the steering wheel so that is first and foremost secondly is this ipad this ipad well no one's going to steal it because you know well you know but this ipad is really good visually now there has been a lot of complaints online that this does have a really good 360 camera and you can't really see it because this ipad is not horizontal it's vertical and obviously you know it's like trying to watch a youtube video when it's been posted from instagram it doesn't look very well because half the screen has been gone or more like three quarters of the screen's been gone and that's probably the same in here if you want to see a wide screen in a camera you kind of want a wide screen you don't really want it vertical but i kind of get why they did it because in terms of radio stations and visuals it does appeal to me it looks pretty cool and we're all used to iphones aren't we now the biggest drawback i see about the system is the lagginess in terms of speed, it's decent. It's not the fastest system out there. So if you are used to being a tech guy and you like to have instant speed, it's decent. It's not the fastest. Three other interesting features is one is the dial. Now, obviously Ford did have Range Rover under its belt for a while, and that might be where this came from. This is pretty cool to have. Now, other manufacturers do have it, like the Ram. The Ram has it up here, but this has it down here. And the cool thing about it is that the paddle shifters actually work, and they actually work pretty well. You just hit the M button, it'll hold the gear all the way up. Second is the auto hold. My wife has this in her BMW X3, and it's an awesome feature. When you come to a stop sign or any behind any car, you press the brake, you let go, and the car does not roll forward. It only rolls forward when you touch the gas, which is pretty cool, so you're not actually holding the brake the whole time. My traffic people, you feel this. And thirdly, is this wireless charging. This wireless charging is pretty cool. You take your phone, you leave it here. But the only problem is this has really good brakes. So when you hit the brake, the phone flaps forward and it unwirelessly charges. Hmm. But if you do have a cord, they thought about you because your USB and USB-Cs are underneath here. And you do have a little sort of cutout that the wire can feed through. So they were thinking about you and they have a slot right here to put your phone. and 415 foot-pounds of torque. This is pretty cool. Shifting is sharp. And this is a brand new rear bias. <laughs> That's right. 10-speed tranny. All the fixins hold ESP off, hold it down, and it'll say advanced hold for advanced track off. All right, so that's shutting the stability program down. This doesn't have launch control, but so hit the brake, hit the gas, a little bit of power, and let go. This does zero to 60 in just over five seconds. You know, Ford is no longer making sedans, so they have to make SUVs that are fun. People say, well, should I buy a Telluride or should I buy this? Well, for starters, this is a little bit bigger, and the Telluride doesn't offer performance. It offers better equipment and better things in it, but they don't offer performance. So if you want performance, there's not really much else to go or look, right? I mean, maybe the Dodge Durango, maybe, which we've got to review soon, but there's not a lot in the in the category, so eh, I could see. So this thing's got stiffer springs, thicker roll bars, and stiffer dampeners, or adaptive dampeners, I apologize. And oh, that's just pretty strong, nice, nice 10 speed tranny. Oh, beautiful, there's deer out. Oh, I love shooting in the country. Um, but yeah, the, so the ride is not overly stiff, it's it's a good feel. It's not going to be crazy bumpy. It's not going to hurt your back, but it definitely is a bit stiffer than most. You will feel and you will get some feedback from the road. You get the body feedback. The steering feedback is decent, 
but I definitely feel the suspension feedback more than I do the steering feedback. And for those that don't know, this does have the same police shocks and the police suspension. So can I catch? Yes, we can catch. Lots of power. I would say it does have performance brakes, but the brakes could be a little bit better. Now, I wanted to specifically drive one that had mileage. I didn't want to drive one that was brand new out of the box. One, because there's been a lot of say with Ford and domestic product not being up to par when it has mileage with the rattles and stuff like that. Now, the back seats do vibrate a little bit, but the overall fit and finish of the drive is still solid. Now, there is a lot of plastic, but that's, you know, sort of to be expected in a Ford, I think, from what I've gathered. I mean, I've had it in my F-150. I've had it in a lot of other Ford products that I've sat in. It is very plasticky, so I'm not really going to jump on that. But in terms of the fit and finish and the whole structural staying together, that's always been a big thing for me. I feel like cars, when they hit like 50, 60,000 miles or kilometers, they just start falling apart around. But this still feels pretty solid. And that was really what I wanted to get today by driving this performance vehicle. Now, obviously, it does depend on who drove it before me and who owned the car before me, but it is pretty solid. This thing does have about 30,000 kilometers, which is about 20,000 miles or so. Like, this can't compete with a Pilot and a Highlander. Yeah, I mean, the other trims, but not the ST. Now, Ford does have two things. One is called Eco Coach, and that basically shows you how you're doing in terms of your effectiveness of driving, of saving fuel. And I don't know why it's in this. They should just yank it. Kept in the other models, but yanked it on this one. And the second one is basically Ford's safety systems to keep you in the road. Um, stop and go, it's got traffic sign recognition, and it's got lane centering, which is exactly like the Telluride. It's got lane centering. It'll keep you in the lane. It'll center you in the lane, not just keep you in the lane. So that is a plus in my opinion, because lane centering is the difference maker. Just keeping you in the lane kind of sucks because you're hitting, and nobody wants that. We want to stay right in the center of the lane. So Ford, sick. I don't know how or why they put it in here, but it is genius and it is massage seats. Like you would not think a performance vehicle or performance Ford vehicle would have massage seats. Just doesn't make any sense, but they put it in. So I'm like, cool, massage on both sides, driver and passenger. So the missus or the mister, you know, can get that back massage. So let's test it out and see how good it is compared to some of the better massages out there. Let's see if it's a Shiatsu massage or it's a lumbar massage. And it is lumbar. So. It is like the Audi S5. It is full lumbar. It is not like a full Shiatsu massage like the Escalade or, oh, oh, it's got lumbar on the booty. It's got lumbar on the booty. So that's pretty cool, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And if there's any of you guys want me to review, let me know in the comments below and back to studio. Well, thank you very much for watching our video on this Ford Explorer ST. And a big shout out to Mount Bridges Ford for giving us this car. Now, if you guys liked our videos, please consider subscribing. And once again, thank you for Mike and thank you for Ian and see you next time.